Hey there, it's the great Johanna speaking, and I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I want to run through the reasons why some people fail in life. Now, a tremendous amount of books have been written about this topic in the self-help section, for example, by Napoleon Hill or Brian Tracy. What I want to get into, however, is what goes on in the mind of a loser. Why do losers lose? And I've come up with 12 reasons or 12 rules for failure. I base my research on studying people on TikTok for the past 18 months or so. So even though I'm a philosopher, I've taken the role as an anthropologist to figure out why people fail. Now I've written them down for you so I can go over them one by one. The people who fail in life, rule number one for failure. They blame everyone else but themselves. You see, if you don't own your decision-making, if you don't make yourself responsible for the outcomes of your life, then you will never succeed in life. If you want to have different outcomes than the ones you've been getting the past decades, then you are going to have to change because you are the one thing that has remained the same and you kept getting the same results, it's easy to blame everyone but you. You can blame circumstances. You can blame the situation. You can blame 400 years of slavery. I could blame the Romans for attacking my ancestors. I could blame the Spaniards for conquering the Netherlands. I could blame the Germans for invading the Netherlands. I could blame Napoleon for marching through the town where I grew up in the Netherlands. I can blame all these historical occurrences uh, and never really tell myself, well, wait a minute, at this point in time, it's up to me now, right? So rule for failure number two, the people who fail in life, they live in the present moment. They see time as one giant now. This is also a quality of extreme narcissists. They perceive themselves as occupying this gigantic present moment and never really stop to wonder what came before and what might come next. How, for example, does the past influence me? Or more importantly, how doesn't it influence me? The problem with this living in the now is we get to rule for failure number three, namely that when you live in the now, you are prone to reverse cause and effect, like cause and consequence. When you live in the present moment and you are absorbed by it, by your own ego filling it, you are going to reason from the present moment backwards. And that means you get things wrong. So I thought of an example. How how do people reverse cause and consequence? Well, just read the, the daily newspapers. The author Michael Crichton, I think he's the Jurassic Park author, he uh, he, he named he calls these articles uh, uh, wet streets cause rain to happen articles. Uh, obviously you've got cause and consequence in reverse there. Now let's give a real world example of this. In the Netherlands, there was a uh, politician who looked at uh, the well-being, the health of common people, citizens, and she noticed that people who are poor also tend to have poor health. So if you're financially worse off in the Netherlands, you are likely to also have poor health. And her solution was to give those people more money so they could be richer, as though being healthy flows from being rich. But that is a case of wet streets make the rain happen. That is a confusion of cause and consequence, because in reality, it's different. If you study people who become wealthy during their own lifetimes, you notice that these are the very people who take very good care of themselves, physically, emotionally, mentally, and in terms of health. So it's the sort of people who learn early on to start taking care of themselves. Brush your teeth, you know, comb your hair, take, get a haircut, do all these things that are good for you, eat healthy, exercise, right? And stick with the plan, stick with your exercise plan. Those people also tend to become wealthier later in life, which makes perfect sense because these are the very people who take personal responsibility. Remember, failure rule number one, they don't take responsibility. People who do take responsibility for themselves, they don't need a state or mommy or daddy to tell them what to do anymore. They take care of themselves and that makes people more successful. It makes you way more likely to succeed later in life. So the politician gets that in reverse. She now wants to take the money from the people who did take care of themselves, 
who became wealthy and then take their money in, in terms of taxes and then give it to the poor people whose only reason for being poor was that they never really cared to take care of themselves. They expected to be taken care of. You know, it's a bit of a additional problem. If you're a politician and you regard the common people as though they were children and you see yourself as this great parent who will take care of the children, you know, and then they call it fascist. The way I explain it, that, you know, people who end up being richer are the ones who took more responsibility for themselves, including their health. They call it fascist. They call you a Nazi. They call me a Nazi for saying it this way. And of course, it would be very fascistic or Nazistic, you know, in the in terms of an insult. If you would abandon three-year-old children, if you would tell a five-year-old child, you have to take care of yourself from now on. Children age five can't do that. But to tell 30-year-old citizens of your country that they can be like children and the state will take care of them, will give you more money and will give you more services so you don't have to do things like carrying responsibility. Now, that is, that is stupid. That is communism. Uh, rule for failure number four. Uh, the people who fail in life, they see life as a cost-benefit sum. They never really invest in themselves if it doesn't uh, offer them immediate rewards in terms of money or uh, taste, tasty food or fun or sexual activity. If, it, if the things that I have to do for myself don't immediately offer me some kind of benefit, then I won't do it because it's a cost benefit analysis. And remember, these people are stuck in the now, so they don't reason in terms of, well, what if I would go to the gym twice a week for an hour and let's go uh, do some sprints in the park on Saturday mornings to give myself uh, growth hormone because you get growth hormone from sprinting, by the way. Why, why, would, why would I do that if it doesn't immediately reward me? You know, if uh, uh, women don't immediately find me more attractive or it doesn't pay me, I'm not, I'm not getting paid to go to the gym. I have to pay the gym to go there. So if you live in the now and you are only worried about your cost-benefit analysis for everything that you do, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be a lazy SOB most of the time, waiting for some employer to employ you and to give you money to move around. And when people are not paying you or when people are not giving you gifts or praise or compliments, you just sit there drinking beer, watching TV. Well, no wonder you're failing in life, see? So... Uh, rule number five for failure ties into this. It is that people who fail in life tend to measure their well-being to their material assets. For example, in the Netherlands, a lot of people will hear on the news that the, the value of their homes in the Netherlands has risen by 2% and they will whip out their calculators and type in the numbers and see, oh, we're, we're 2,000 euros more valuable today they identify their own value as human beings with their material possessions, which actually means that their material possessions possess them. Get it? So they don't own their house. Their house owns them. And they, as the value of their house rises, they see, themsel they see themselves as more valuable people. Um, recently, though, I heard that in the Netherlands, housing prices dropped by on average 5,000 euros. So you can imagine that all of a sudden, all Dutch people who are like this, which is the majority, 80, no, 97% of people, by the way, I didn't say this yet, but 97% of people are losers who follow these 12 rules for failure. 97% of Dutch people now feel absolutely shit about themselves because all of a sudden their assets are worth 5,000 euros less. So they're depressed now. Uh, only 3% of people see it in, a, in another way where I have values in and of myself. I work for myself. I invest in myself. I acquire skills, for example, skills that I pay for. I have to pay. Sometimes I have to pay to get a course to learn new skills or something, right? So um, this brings me to rule number six for failure. The people who fail in life don't understand that when you measure your own wealth, your own value to your material possessions, which is external validation, you are missing out on internal validation. So these people do not, losers, don't experience a sense of internal value or internal validation, meaning that I can read books to make myself smarter, even though reading books doesn't pay me money. But it may pay off much later in life. I could, because of the body of knowledge that I've absorbed over the years, 
all of a sudden I can end up in a position, a position of power or of authority or simply a position of expertise. I happen to know, really know something about something. So people value my knowledge and so on and so forth. Uh, these people, the losers, the failures in life, since they only have external validations, you know, money, sexual pleasure, uh, do people like me? Do the women like me? Does my family like me? Does my boss like me? If that's what you base your life around, uh, no wonder you're failing because you are going to be so scared, so afraid to lose these external validations over which you hold no control, right? You don't control this. So there's nothing you can do unless if you would do it the other way around and focus on internal validations. I'll get to this later, by the way. At the end of this video, I'm going to reverse all these 12 lessons into the 12 rules for success. So, so rule number seven for failure in life. People who fail in life have a limited cognitive ability. They tend to specifically take matters very literally. I call them literalists. Some people call them low IQ people, and you would be right. People with low IQs, um, they don't just think slower or they have more narrow interests, like they, they just watch soccer all the time. People with low IQs actually have trouble grasping certain abstract concepts such as satire, sarcasm, uh, analogies and comparisons. Have you ever uh, debated people on the internet and you compared, you made a comparison between people and polar bears? You didn't mean to say that people are polar bears. You meant to say that polar bears behave in a certain way in certain condition. And this is comparable to how people behave in a certain condition. You can draw conclusions from this, this analogy. And have you ever had people who said like, hey, why are you talking about polar bears? <laughs> what, 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 what if polar bears got to do with people? You're saying polar bears are people? Have you ever met such people on the internet? The literalists who take what you said literally because they can't see the comparison. They do not see the analogy there. Well, those are low IQ people. That's how you spot them. Now, I personally don't know. See, I do believe that IQ intelligence is heritable to a large degree, like up to 90% or 95% is heritable. But keep in mind, what you inherit is not a point value. You don't inherit IQ 132. What you inherit is an ability. You in inherit a range, so to speak. So if you are presently at IQ 130, uh, but you have never really pushed the envelope yet, I believe it is possible to gain, say, all standard deviation in intelligence later in life on the condition that you pursue activities that require you to think more intelligently. But that's a matter for a different video. Rule number eight for failure in life. People who fail in life, they do things too quickly because they are in a hurry to accelerate their lives and they seize every opportunity to get ahead. You have to imagine it this way. Imagine you're a cow grazing in the meadows and you notice that there's just a greener patch of grass right over there and you run over to it and you eat it. And then you see another patch and you run over it and you eat that. And you see another patch and you run over it and you eat that. If you live that way, from if you move from patch of grass to patch of grass, you will never see the bigger picture. You will never see the bigger meadow full of green grass that the cows in your herd haven't even found yet. But if you live like this, if you live too quickly, if you don't have patience to absorb the bigger picture or to first like read a book about a topic before you make a decision, uh, obviously the people who are too quick to action tend to lose out because of that. Rule number nine for failure in life. The people who fail in life, they have very vague goals in their, in their lives, if any at all. They do not think about you know, concrete goals they wish to achieve in life. They don't write them down and they certainly don't carry these written down goals with them. You can have them on your phone. You can have a little text file somewhere where you have like your top 10, your bucket list. Actually, goals are better than a bucket list. It's not like, a goal is nothing like, oh, I want to do bungee jumping or something, or I want to go skydiving. Those are bucket list items. Life goals would be something like, I want to learn five languages. I want to be a PhD in this field and work in that field for 30 years. Those are goals, okay? So keep that in mind. Goals and bucket lists are not the same thing. Uh, people who fail in life, they have a bucket list, but they have no goals. Their, or their goals are extremely vague, like, I want to be rich, Okay. Why? What are you going to do with the money? And how do you want to get rich? 
oh, you don't want to work to get rich. You just want to be rich. I've met people who told me this. They want to be rich. And when I asked them how they expect to get rich, they said that they didn't want to work for it. They just want to be rich. <laughs> That's just stupid. Those people are failures. Uh, rule number 10 for failures in life. Uh, the people who fail in life also tend to wait to be told what to do. They are passive people. Since they don't have any clear goals in their lives, they expect their boss or some authority figure, a father figure, or perhaps Mommy Merkel, Angela Merkel of Germany, or whoever, to tell them what to do. They do not think for themselves about what could I do next to advance myself or to achieve my goals? Well, you can't achieve your goals if you don't have any. And as they say, as they say, if you don't have goals, you will end up working for people who do. Rule number 11 for failure in life. The people who fail in life, they look for the first solution or the first answer to a question, and then they stop thinking. And this is a big problem. Uh, imagine it this way. Say you have limited knowledge about a topic. And you have to solve a problem. And the first thing that comes to mind to you is simply the definitive solution. And you don't appreciate the fact that there may be more solutions to the left or right or back and forth. You don't try to think of many solutions and then to weigh them to assess which solution is really the best one. Uh, this also ties in with being too quick in life. If you are very quick in life, you will find one solution. You want to go run with it, right? Um, the people who just take a little more time to see if there are other solutions that may be better, they obviously, if you consistently do that, they obviously succeed more in life. So, and then the final rule, rule number 12 for failure in life, the people who fail in life are immune to self-improvement largely due to a uh, God complex. If you believe you are perfect, then you're not going to change. The problem is that if you think you're perfect, but your life has been miserable, then how are you going to change yourself to not be miserable anymore? You're going to blame the circumstances. You're going to blame everybody else again. So if you accept for a moment that you can be humble and that being just a little bit humble opens doors for you psychologically so that you can now transform yourself into the person who is going to be successful. You cease to be the person you were who only had failures in life, and you become the man or woman you want to be to have success. But this requires you to accept some humility and realize, okay, it was me. It was I. I, after all, made poor decisions in the past. That means I have to change. Because if you have a God complex and you imagine you're the world's greatest, you're going to lose in life. Now people are going to tell me, what about the irony of your name? You use the great Johannes as your name. Oh. Well, I explained that in another video. Is that I had an absolutely terrible broken life where I actually felt deeply inferior about myself. And so part of my transformation to becoming more successful and achieving more things that I want to achieve in life was to stop seeing me as an inferior man and to see myself as the great Johannes. It's also a bit of a tongue-in-cheek joke. And since I get the joke, right, I understand the humility. So now I'm going to run through the 12 rules for success. I'm going to, I'm going to do these fairly quickly. Rule number one, take responsibility for yourself. Don't blame anything on others. Rule number two, Quit living in the present moment and be more appreciative of how time flows from the past through the present moment toward the future and how it all ties together. Rule number three for success, understand how cause and consequence works and don't get them in reverse, but see them right. Rule number four, stop seeing life as a cost-benefit analysis, but rather understand that often in life you will have to pay first and then get benefits way later in life. Rule number five, don't measure your value off of what you own or what you earn, but rather measure the value of yourself based on the skills you've acquired, the books you've read, the places you've traveled, the experiences you've accumulated, and what you've learned from that. Rule number six, work from your internal validations and do not rely so much on external validations. Rule number seven, be smart. Use that brain for thinking rather than for reacting or responding. 
your mind is not a reflex system. Your mind can actually slowly absorb a lot of information and then present to you the solution you were really looking for. But it takes time, like baking something in the oven can take time. Rule number eight, do things with patience. Take a few steps back. Climb the mountain to see the valleys below. Rule number eight, write down your life goals and make it very clear what they are supposed to be. And then also start making plans for them and budget for them and set deadlines for them. Rule number 10 for success, don't wait for people to tell you what to do, but use that brain for thinking ahead and giving yourself more things to do. Even if no one pays you to do them, it might be useful for you to do them anyway, such as learning skills. Rule number 11 for success, if you have found one solution for a problem, try to find more solutions and then weigh them to see which one is the best or most optimal or which one will help you achieve your goals quickly. Rule number 12, get over yourself. Accept that you are not perfect. You will never know everything. Be a bit more humble. Show a little humility and allow yourself, therefore, to transform yourself as a person and to grow and advance yourself so you can become the person who becomes more successful.